Good morning, gentlemen. I hope the fates find you well. I want to say at the outset that this video is not going to be a review of the game Cyberpunk 2077, and for a number of reasons. The first reason is that this channel is not a gaming channel, certainly not primarily. I do occasionally talk about games, but it's not the main focus. The second reason is the more obvious reason. There exists right now a plethora of reviews and videos covering the game whether it's the bugs, the problems, the criticisms, the good and bad points. And so for that reason, I don't see the need to cover it here. Now, if there's some feedback in the comment section, I may or may not do an off-the-cuff review or a very, very watered-down My Thoughts on Cyberpunk, not a serious video, but a simple stream of conscious video on the game itself. But this video, the video in which I'm talking right now, will not be a review of the game. I'm not going to be offering any spoilers. I'm not going to be talking about technical details other than things in a very broad, general sense. And what I'm trying to achieve is a discussion about the parallels that exist between our world and the world of Cyberpunk 2077. So let's get started. Now, at the outset, in case you don't know, a little background about the world of Cyberpunk. The dystopian reality we know as cyberpunk, both in the game and the pen and paper, was created by one Mike Pondsmith way back in the 80s. And it takes a lot of inspiration from things like Blade Runner and some other less well-known cyberpunk-esque literature and exploration of the dystopian cyberpunk setting. And when it was conceived, it originally was conceived as taking place in 2013. And the funny thing about cyberpunk is, as you probably have noticed, it's moved on in terms of the years throughout the years. 2013 arrived, and 2013 was disappointingly dissimilar to what one might call the prophecies and predictions of Mike Pondsmith in his pen and paper work and his written creation. Now, after that happened, they pushed it even further back to 2020, and then there's Cyberpunk Red, which is 2045. And then, just for the sake of safety, the game itself is set in 2077. Now, it goes without saying that this is all fictional work, but part of it is not, and I'll get to that later. Because the idea behind cyberpunk is that the universe is based on a divergent reality from our own. You get a branching off into a different reality, a darker, more frightening reality. Now, that's a matter of interpretation, and you also have to understand that the setting emerged in the 1980s, still in the midst of the Cold War. There's still a very real fear, a justifiable one in the context of cyberpunk, which I'll get to in a second, of nuclear war and nuclear destruction. In fact, during the course of the alternate timeline in cyberpunk, we know for a fact that there have been multiple nuclear conflicts. And for example, that the entire Middle East, as we know it, is a nuclear wasteland. And so these are some of the thoughts that went into it. And on top of that, you also can observe similarities and dissimilarities in terms of the technology we see. Cyberpunk is all about plugs and wires. And this is very reminiscent of an 80s perspective of the future, frankly speaking. There are lots of plugs and wires. If you're old enough, you might remember people with their Walkman. I had a Walkman myself. You had this cord. It was this big clunky device. Things looked a lot like what we see in cyberpunk. It's not quite as streamlined as it is in the current year, our technology, which tends to verge in the direction of being wireless. That's at least the preferred form of these things. So once we have a kind of technology that is far beyond our own, more on that in a bit, but at the same time, we have predictions that were predicated on a vision that was born in the 80s, and frankly speaking, the creator, Mike Pondsmith, couldn't really think beyond. We're always limited by our set of circumstances in life, and that also affects the creative process. There's no question about that. And so it's a dystopian 80s-esque vision of the future, which arguably you could say Blade Runner was as well, and that's what we get and that's what we see. It isn't more primitive, but the advancements that are observable in the setting, broadly speaking, and in the game specifically, are very much a consequence of the limitations of a mind that is trapped in the 80s. And 
when you're not a prognosticator or a prophet, it's a bit difficult to think outside of that box. So broad similarities and differences. The net is a thing, obviously, but again, it's much more wired than the current idea of the net. Everything has wires. Similarly, automobiles and transportation in general, in general, not specifically, is very similar. On the ground, you see cars that remind you of an 80s style. On the other hand, you also see air transportation that's not available in our current age, hover cars and what have you, this sort of thing. And these things are juxtaposed, if you will, next to this more primitive form of technology, which is always on the ground to observe. And because this alternative universe, this alternative world, veered off into a very different direction from our own, at least partly, you also see things that we just don't have and probably won't see for quite some time. One interesting difference is the effect of AI. AI definitely exists in the cyberpunk universe. It is powerful and it is a thing, but arguably AI seems to be less stressed and less of a concern than it is in the modern world than, for example, cyber augmentations, people melding themselves with bits of metal, wire, and machine. That's something that is far, far, far off for us. We can't even imagine it, and yet in the original material, this stuff was very much current, even in 2013, 2020, and onwards. Again, a major difference. Yes, AI exists, but the emphasis is not nearly as strong as I would have predicted it to be, given certain trajectories and trends as we can observe them right now. What about the general ambiance, the setting? Well, this is where we come to some very, very alarming observations we can make. And I'll explain. One of the things that is characteristic of Mike Pondsmith's vision, and intentional, is this notion of style over substance. And this notion of style over substance is infused in everything in this universe, in this world. Nothing really has a core to it other than the glitter that shines, other than the outward projection of what you are seeing externally. But internally, it's typically hollow. And we've definitely seen a trend along those lines in recent years, and that's definitely a cultural, artistic direction that things have been going for quite some time. We see it with films, we see it with video games, we see it with art, we see it with music. This idea that's more about the flair, it's more about the visuals, and it's more about the projection than it is about the core of what's really going on. And you could argue that CGI, which tends to bedazzle people these days, is a good example of this. Look at film production. A lot of film production, just as an example, has gone the direction of CGI is there to charm and bedazzle you, and you can forget about the story in the meantime. It's not always the case, but often is the case. And the other element that I think is probably most disturbing and definitely is an observable trend in the current year, in the current age, is the fact that in the cyberpunk universe, everything is monetized. And by that I mean every form of behavior, every form of what one might have traditionally called degeneracy, every form of sin, every form of strangeness is not only monetized, it is encouraged in a sense. And here we run into some eerie parallels between our own world. A lot of people in the current year talk about moral decay and loss of tradition and all of these things. And there's some truth to that. There's no doubt in my mind that we've moved away from certain traditions. Whether you like these traditions or not is an entirely different matter, but it definitely is the case. And a lot of people tend to veer more on the traditional side, more conservative side, religious side, look at this all as active attempts to sabotage some kind of well-thought-out, constraining moral system. And there might be some truth to that, but I see a different trend. I think this trend is very well embodied in the cyberpunk universe of Mike Pondsmith, which is to say it is not immorality, it is amorality. It's a world where everything can be bought, everything can be paid for, and there's no limit as to the moral depth or lack thereof which imposes itself on any sort of transaction. 
And I definitely see the parallels there between our world and this world. You need only look at things like OnlyFans, and I won't name her because naming her causes problems, but a certain individual's recent escapades is a tiny example, a fraction of the many, many other examples out there, and the general trend of anything goes. Now, anything goism, I think, again, as I've just said, is much more a reflection of amorality and interest purely in profit than is of immorality, some sort of intentional deviancy from the past. Because in order to have a deviance from the past, you need to be aware of the past. You need to want to rebel against something. But here's the question, gentlemen. What is the denizen in late 2020 rebelling against, especially if he's young? He doesn't have an awareness of the past. He didn't live in it. It's quite different when you look at the sexual revolution of the 1960s or the protests in the 70s regarding Vietnam. People were rebelling against something. Whether it was right or wrong is an entirely different question. And where you fall in the political spectrum, we'll say a lot about whether or not you favored that or not. But nonetheless, we're in a fight club situation. And you know the quote I'm talking about. I see all this potential and I see it squandered. God damn it, an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. We're the middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'll all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars. But we won't, and we're slowly learning that fact, and we're very, very pissed off. Only the difference here, the critical difference is, no one's really pissed off. Not really. Yes, there are these aspirations. Yes, people are deluding themselves. Though the entire world has been transformed into consumerism culture. And cyberpunk, in some of its worst elements, definitely reflects that. And in that sense, there's a continuity between this vision of the future, as presented in cyberpunk, both in the game and in the pen and paper setting, in our world. We are rapidly, rather than slowly, moving in a direction where all sorts of behaviors and all sorts of activities, which in an earlier age not only would have been frowned upon, but would have been outright illegal and punishable, and in some cases even worse, well, we're moving in a direction where much of that is accepted, and it's not for the sake of rebellion. It's simply for the sake of amoral transaction. An amoral transaction and the illusion of chasing glory, something that many people find themselves, especially netizens, doing these days. The allure of Instagram or the allure of YouTube or the allure of being an internet personality. This is something, frankly speaking, that is well encapsulated in this world, and we are definitely moving in this direction, and we're already on the path. And so call it luck, call it what you want, but in as much as Mike Pondsmith has created this world, he definitely nailed that. That's the one thing that's consistent. The cauldron of transaction, the amoral transaction, which suffuses everything in this world and increasingly suffuses our own world. And depending on where you fall on a political, religious, or ethical spectrum, you may or may not be concerned about this. That's a separate question. That's a separate discussion. But the parallels in this regard are eerily similar. A lot of the other stuff, not so much. The deviance in technology, the different types of technology, the historical events themselves in that world, in that universe, it's all different. But I keep on coming back to this one point. So in as much as I don't think cyberpunk is prophetic, is prophecy, this was somewhat prophetic. This seems to be contiguous to our own world in many ways. And I think we're going to see much more of this to come, and the parallels will become clearer and clearer to everyone in the world as time goes by. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. As always, please hit the like button, share the video, hit the bell icon to be informed of the forthcoming videos, sub if you've not yet subbed to my channel, and as always, may the gods watch over you. Enjoy the rest of your week, and if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. Take care. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.